This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about Vera Diana from 1961, directed by Louis Bunuel. Mm. The tagline for this film, RJ. We've got nothing yeah. to hide. Mm. What? We've got nothing to hide. What does that mean? We've got nothing to hide. What else is? It? What else could it possibly mean? But what is the context in relation to the to the story? Well, we're gonna find out, right? That's that's the point. Yeah, but I've seen this movie and I don't <laughs> understand that. Uh. Vera Diana is preparing to start her life as a nun when she is sent somewhat unwillingly to visit her aging uncle, Don Jaime. He supports her, mm. but the two have met only once. Jaime thinks Vera Diana resembles his dead wife. Vera Diana has secretly despised this man all her life and finds her worst fears proven when Jaime grows determined to seduce his pure niece. Vera Diana becomes mm. undone as her uncle upends the plans she had made to join the convent. Um, undone in what fashion? I mean, she literally she she doesn't wind up doing it. I mean, I guess that's kind of true, yeah. No. Yeah. Mm. So wait, that's it, hey? That that's it. Then it run, then it just it just stops. It yep. just, that's the end of the movie. And that's the end of the Criterion, right? This is the last episode. Uh, I mean, do you want it to be? Well, no. I just assumed are, like this are you are, the, are are you a quitter? I just I I thought this was maybe the last episode. Like they, this was the one where they're like, we did it, we got him, we nailed it, we got him. This is Criterion. Mm. Only, only the real ones. No, okay, the real ones. All right. Well, I'm I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm here. Yeah. So. You know, RJ, I consider yeah. myself a, a bit of a big Bunwell boy. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big. I would, I would say I'm a big fan. I've liked uh, most of the Bunwell movies. Yeah. Um, so I've actually seen this movie before, and I watched it about seven or eight years ago. Mm. Uh, be, you know, before we uh, doomed ourselves to doing this Criterion podcast thing. Sure. And uh, you know, back then. In those uh, salad days, when I watched mm. the Criterion, and maybe I was, you know, feeling a little bit underwhelmed, uh, but I, you know, I appreciated the cinematography, or uh, you know, it's like, ah, eh, it's not offensively bad. It's not an annoying movie, I guess. Sure. I, I didn't hate the movie. Maybe I just sure. wasn't into it at the moment. Um, but you know, I've paid Criterion prices for my copy, mm-hmm. and I would, uh, you know, hop on Letterbox and give it a a polite three stars. Sure, and then sure. I would, and then I would never think about it ever again. Mm-hmm. But here we are. That's what you do. It's spine yeah. <clears throat> three hundred and thirty-two. And are you happy with the decisions you make? But which ones, for exactly? Yes, all of them. All of my decisions, like doing this and getting to rewatch, yeah. revisit films. Yes. Well, we'll, we'll get there. Okay. Well, well, I mean, I was going to say though, um, it's it isn't twenty fourteen anymore, RJ. And there have been harsh life lessons along the way. Mm. Amongst them, which um, was the harshest? <laughs> well, this, this, right here. This one here? No, not, be... not not this. Just the pod. Oh, it's it's oh. it's it's, 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 it's uh, re rewired my brain. I feel like sometimes in a bad way. Well, it makes it makes me feel like I have to be answerable to these movies to an audience mm. that doesn't care. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, what what do we get eight listeners on that one episode? Uh or the Patreon one, sorry, I yeah. should say. Mm-hmm. Or actually, no, the Patreon's booming. Everyone should check out the Patreon. We have uh, exclusive content on there and thousands of uh thousands. potential potential listeners. That's right. See, if you say potential, you're not liable if it's not true. Right. Thousands of potential listeners. Look, RJ's not a legal advisor. No, I'm not a cop. No, that too. I'm not a cop. Not a cop. So, RJ. Yeah. Nuns. Uh, yeah, what about them? Uh, what, Are they tell, Catholic? Tell me uh, Tell me about it. I don't know. I don't know anything about nuns. Uh, I don't either. I didn't have nuns where I, like, I mean, I was Catholic. You had none of it? I had none of it. Pride of the North. Um, 
No, I went to Catholic school, but it was taught by like regular ass people. There was no like <laughs> nuns or priests or anything like that. The priests would come like once a month and do like mass, but uh, that was the extent of it. I, I, I don't know if I know a lot of nuns. There was like one maybe, mm-hmm. but like she would just show up sometimes and be like, reading is cool. And then she'd like leave. And then we were like, okay, <laughs> reading, reading must be cool. If this lady's doing it. Not bad. Yeah, that's uh that's my experience with the nuns. What about you? Do you have an equal or shared experience with my, nuns? My, my entire uh I, I don't know if I've ever met a nun uh knowingly in my life. Mm-hmm. But uh I've I've definitely encountered nuns in the movies. Nuns in the movies? Yeah. What's your favorite movie nun? Oh and uh, I'm gonna mm. I'll go ahead and say Whoopi <laughs> Goldberg. <laughs> so you can pick someone yeah. else so you don't feel pressured. Okay. Mm-hmm. How about hmm, let's see here? I'm gonna look up some nun exploitation films. It's probably, I'm gonna go with a, a sexy nun. What do you mean sexy? Yeah, yeah. They're ladies of the cloth, Jarrett. That's fine. Yeah, but they don't. They don't. Uh, they know how to get down. Fall for such carnal things. Um, carnal. Carnal. How about um? Well, the devils. Devils are pretty good. Go, go someone, someone, want someone in there. You know. I do know. Sure. I do know. So yeah, Devils is pretty pretty decent. Yeah, we'll go Vanessa Redgrave. Ooh, Sister she's Jean, one, yeah. One of the real ones, eh? She's one of the real ones. I don't know. Yeah. I, I I still don't know what that means, but yeah, definitely one of those. In it, it's uh it's in terms of like like where you are in like space, man. Like what's your what's your truth? Hey, shut are up. you in control of your narrative? <laughs> Enough, enough. No more, no more, no All more right. about my well, narr- you, no more about controlling narratives. Well, you asked and I'm the just... <laughs> pits and quote unquote matches and match. Pits, so anyway, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the movie kicks off with a uh, this young woman. She wants to be a nun. She's a novice, mm-hmm. so she hasn't really become one yet. But uh, she's got a, an uncle that's been mm-hmm. paying her way that she doesn't really. No, and it's kind of skeeved out by, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, but his like om his presence that kind of um, has kind of been following her around. But it's like oh, I got to go visit him because he's because he's dying. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, I got to go visit him. I mean, you're gonna be in this nunnery forever, so you're never gonna ever see him again because you can't leave. You're held captive. We tie mm-hmm. you to the bed. You can't go. Which is, I'm like, that's not how that works. Um. That's not how it's worked for you? No. Or just traditionally? That's I, not I don't think so. Well, and I don't think so. I think people can leave. They can go do other things. Yeah, but, you know, sometimes people don't have those options, man. Like, sometimes sometimes things are more complicated. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? No. You don't know what I mean? So, so we get uh, Unk Unk, uh, the uncle, uh, uncle, yeah. uncle Jaime, um, mm-hmm. played by Fernando Rey, uh, mm-hmm. who you probably should recognize from a whole bunch of the Louis Benwell movies that we have watched. Yeah, I've seen him once or twice. You've seen that guy. Yeah. He seems like a seems like a good dude, right? Well, he does some jump rope with the kids. Yeah, a little bit of skipping, a little bit yeah. of rope. Chekhov's skip rope, as it turns out. What do you mean Chekhov's skip rope? Well, you know about Chekhov's gun, right? Oh, I know about Chekhov from Enterprise. Yeah, well, this is his skip rope because you're like, whoa. But you don't even realize it because you're not thinking mm. what's going to what happens in that skip rope. T- pays off eventually eventually so yep. yeah uncle's hanging out with the housemaid's daughter Rita. um he hangs it up on a tree uh-huh. you like that uh. mm-hmm. so of course he's like very very enthusiastic that finally his his beautiful niece who looks just like his dead wife who died the night of their wow. wedding oh shit and uh he's like very enamored with her um, Bunuel feeds into that enamoring with some like these like long shots of the 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 actress playing uh, Verdiana. Her gams, RJ, those 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 legs. Am I right? What did you call them? Gams. Gams. And uh, is that a word you got from this film, or no. is that something that you've added? That's you've that's, added that. That's old timey talk, RJ. Okay. You know, you I know, just wanted to know where the source was. You, you know about gams. I know about games and games and, and yams and gains and games. 
Yeah, well, you you put down a lot of yams, you're going to get some capital mm. gains. So yeah, there, there's an element uh, in Bunuel movies usually of uh, fetish, RJ. Mm. You know about fetishes? I've heard of uh, yeah. some vinegar syndrome stuff, mm-hmm. but uh, I'm not quite sure past that if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just just the the basis. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. What what mm-hmm. about milking cows? Tell me about it. Uh, I mean, I've never done, but um, how, how did but, it look? How did this movie make it look? Um, I felt like the guy was going for it a little bit more than he needed to. But I mean, from what I understand, like those kind of cows, like especially dairy cows, it is good for them. Like you don't want it to build up because if it builds up too much, they can actually like the bag will get too big and it'll hurt them and they could like die and stuff. So if there's no like calves around, Mm -hmm. but they're still making milk, they got to get milked. But you know what I wouldn't do because Louis Pasteur taught me not to do these things. I would not milk a cow into a cup and then just kind of down that cup right there on scene as the people in this film do. Uh, I would probably pasteurize that milk first. Well, you you could, well, pasteurization will keep, make it so it keeps. Yeah. But I would definitely boil that milk. You know what I mean? Uh, You're not old timey enough, RJ. Well, I mean, I would do something to that milk. You you know what I mean? Well, there might be some good microbes in there. I don't need any more gut microbes. You know what I'm working with over here. I got enough microbes for the for all of us. I know that there's uh, issues, struggles around toilets and underwear. So I mean, I, I, I'm not buying it. Not... It's not that it's a struggle. It's just I'm fighting for my life, Jarrett. And it's not a struggle. It's just every day is a new. Every day is a day. You know what I mean. Every day is a gift. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Can you repeat know. what you just said? Nothing. I, I said nothing. Okay. I said nothing. It doesn't yeah. matter. You but I'm it. just saying, I would have I would have done something to that milk and before I drank it. That's all. Do you drink cow milk? No. No. What about cream? Uh, no. What I mean, about cheese? In cooking. Cheese, what about yeah. cheese? Oh, I love cheese. Cow cheese? I don't, I don't know. I'm assuming it's the only kind. But As, next time you go to the store. Go to the no. go one go of the, 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 the people at Safeway or Save On, wherever what, you're. Is this, is this what you do with your weekends? No, I do other things. But go to the store and go to the person and take them a break of like, just like cheddar cheese and just be like, is this cow cheese? Oh, my God. Or, and, see, and just see what they say. Okay. I'm just curious. All right. Cow cheese. Yeah. Cow cheese. So, yeah, we get some suggestive milking. Because these these little uh, nubs, these cow nubs, they kind of look mm. like penises, and they shoot white stuff everywhere. Uh, I didn't get that at all. Yeah, that's I what, thought of it that, as what, nothing what, more what, than what, milk. What do you think when her hand's reaching toward it, and she's kind of like, oh, no. Well, it's a live animal, Jared, and there's going to be some there's going to be some hesitation because, uh, you know, you're like, am I going to hurt this thing? Is it going to hurt me? Mm. So I feel like you potentially misread the situation yeah i'm just i mean i'm not saying you did i'm just saying the you, potential was there the potential was there because there's a line where a man's willing to help her where he goes mm-hmm. shall i guide your hand give it a pull and uh how did you interpret that um i mean i think i, I think i just said mm. how and, about um, how about that okay. scene uh, right after that, where she's hanging out with her unk unk, uh, mm-hmm. with she, they, there's some saving a bee from a from a barrel of water. How'd you interpret that? What was the metaphor there, Jarrett? I don't know. Uh, kindness. Yeah, he says, look, he would save a bee out of a bucket. He's such a good guy. But what else will uh, Uncle Jaime do? Um, he'll go and smell your shoes. Try, try them on. And- Try them on. Maybe uh, even try your, what's that, a corset or a bustier? Yeah. What is it? What is that called? Bustier. 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 He tried it. He didn't get it on, but he tried. Yeah. You know? Mm. And then, and then while you're doing that, it turns out that your, your niece that you're kind of uh, enamored with, she's sleepwalking. Yeah. She really, she's kind of walking around and, uh, what does she throw in the fire? Oh, uh, knitting. She throws some knitting in there, and then she collects some uh, dust. Yeah. 
and uh, puts that dust in a in um, a basket. That's right. And then right. takes it back to her room. That's right. And he says, "What are you doing?" <laughs> says, "You're being crazy." And then he and he's very like, "Fair, you don't have to feel bad about sleepwalking, but hey, you want to do me a favor? You want to?" And then it cuts, and it's like, "Oh, he has her dressed up in his dead wife's wedding dress." Oof. Where, where do you think he meant to go with that? Well, I mean, where he went to go with that, I was like, hey, I never want you to leave me. I want you to live in the estate, this massive mm-hmm. estate, uh, forever with me. And she's like, I, I got, I'm going to go. And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Here, I'll have my housemaid prepare us some beverages. And he gives her, like, the, the, the housemaid a little bit of a nod. And she's like, and RJ... Our, our, our Vera Diana, she gets drugged. Yeah. And she's out like a light. Yeah. And and then what happens, Jared? Well, RJ, Uncle Jaime, he's yeah. uh he's getting ready. He's getting he's for getting what? for uh to ravage this unconscious woman without consent. And uh can you just can you define consent to me? <laughs> Uh, I know what it is. I'm just. Yeah. I just want you to define it. <laughs> you want me to define it. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I mean, since you know what it is, I, I'm so curious what you think. Uh, uh, conscious, and, um, consenting. Can you use the word in the definition? <laughs> no. Uh, willing. Yeah. And. Um, mu- yeah. Mutually uh, mu- participate. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Mutual, mutual, and she was not, I believe, is well, was my interpretation of that scene. Because she was asleep, she's unconscious, <laughs> and and he just starts pawing around, he, uh, undoes her t- top, and just like getting right in there in that cleavage, RJ. But then, you know then he goes, "Oh wait, no, 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 I I can't do this." What a and, good, um, what a good guy, RJ. It was just like when he saved the bee, remember? Exactly. Yeah. It was showing that he, he had... He, um, he, contr- he showed restraint. He showed restraint. A real, a real gentleman rapist. So, um, the next morning, uh, she's not feeling well, you know, having been drugged. And he shows up, and she, of course, is like, oh, all I remember is this guy, like, telling me that he never wants me to leave. And she's like, well, I, I still really want to get away from you. And he's like, well... You can't because I raped you. And now you're now you're sullied and now you can't go back to the convent. And now you got to stay with me anyway. And uh and, but that doesn't work either. No. And she's he, going she's going to leave. And he's like, "Oh, don't go. I I, I didn't actually I didn't do that. I lied." Well, some would say that's the oldest trick in the book, right? Oh, yeah. The old Viridiana, they call it. Mm-hmm. One of the oldest tricks in the book. No. Man. But she yeah. and she still leaves. Yeah, because um if you were told that, that happened to you, would you stay or <laughs> would you wanna go would you wanna leave more? Well, she does go. And before she can board that bus or train, um the police show up. And say, hey, you're not going anywhere. We're investigating an apparent suicide. Why would they keep her? Well, they want they want to know the details. They got to get interviews. This is this man is a very important man. Is he? And I mean, she fled. She fled before he died. It's like, what what happened? We want to know. But the other thing that winds up happening is she winds up getting the place. Uh yeah, I was confused by that. Well, I was like, did she get it, or and then and then the cousin comes, or did the, she the go, her, well, go to yeah, the cousin's well, house? Well, Uncle Uncle Jaime's son shows up. And you're like, well, I would assume that he would get it. Mm. Um, I'm unsure. Well, I think it's like maybe the property is left to both her and his um, illegitimate son, Jorge. Or hey, what's his last name? Balog. Ex- yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Bellagio. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes more sense. 
That makes more sense. So uh, she's, of course, disturbed by all this because she doesn't know whether or not this guy who just killed himself did do something to her or didn't do anything to her, I guess. And so she's like, well, I can't go be a nun. And I've got this pretty sweet estate. Uh, I guess I'm going to hang out here. So she's no longer, she's not going to be a nun anymore. But what does she decide mm-hmm. to do instead? Why? She goes to, to help some unhomed people, RJ. She goes to help the the downtrodden, the the the, the cripples, and the and the broken, the, the, the and blind, the, and the meek, and the meek, the yeah. the, the dwarves. <laughs> Who? The dwarves. Oh, okay. Yeah. What do they do? I don't know. They hang out. They all join because they're like, "Hey, you want a sweet place to stay and some food." And they're like, sure thing. And so they get up on their crutches and canes and <laughs> hobble on down the road. They're like, this, is, this isn't too bad, not living in town. Not living in town. Um, and then the son arrives. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's all this going on? He shows up with his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know. A, a, a whole lot of nothing kind of happens from this point on, in my opinion, RJ. Um because it's like it's a lot of scenes of uh, people eating, and it's like back and forth between the son and Verdiana, and like what his motivations are that he's like breaking up with his girlfriend. And he's like and he's telling Verdiana, <laughs> "Don't you understand why a man would do that? If you don't understand, you don't understand men." <laughs> what do you What do you think his implication was? I don't know that he's he's gonna he wants to hook up with that. In what in what way? But I don't know. He doesn't. Ha- it doesn't wind up happening. He he winds up uh, more along with the the, the housekeeper. Uh, yeah, and she's more. She's more his speed. Yeah, she, she's even in, though she, she knocked over the soup that one time. Yeah, she's into that. Yeah, have you ever knocked over soup? I don't believe so. Have I did you, it once. Yeah, how was that? It felt bad because I was a little kid. And when I knocked it over, um, so like we didn't, sometimes we didn't eat at the table. We ate in front of the, uh, the TV, you know, Jared, Mm -hmm. you know, like you do. And I got a big bowl of soup and I was like, I'm gonna eat this in front of the TV. And everyone was like, we wouldn't should take soup into the family room. It's like, she'd eat soup at the table. And I was like, I know what I'm doing. You guys, Mm -hmm. I was like 12. I was like, I know what I'm doing, everybody. And so I took the soup into the room and I spilt it. And then I felt like a like a real piece of shit. Good. Like a real piece of shit. And what did they also say to you at that point? They called me a real piece of shit. And? And it was true, I and, guess. And they, they, did they tell you, no soup for you? And then they, they, no. look, look at, they look at the camera? No, nothing like that. Okay. No, nothing like that. What were we talking about? Um... This movie. <laughs> uh, we watched the movie? We did. So, okay. yeah. So, at this point, I mean, it's sort of this uh, tension between uh, these parties. But, like, then there's this, like, this entire sequence of just, like, the the drunken, riotous bunch, um, as Wikipedia describes them, um, just, like, dining and having a Da Vinci's Last Supper um uh, portmanteau like image composition and wow. to the to the strains of handel's messiah yeah. handel's messiah yeah you know that is that like a street name yeah to call me handel's messiah mm-hmm. that's my neck tattoo handel's messiah mm-hmm. yeah i don't buy that either but okay yeah well not the neck tattoo part i believe that but yeah you can see it right now I, well yeah i see it every week when we do the podcast yeah so yeah, um, there's some uh, some attempted rapes, some rapes, some manhandlings going on with these these riotous fun bums. Riotous fun? Did you describe them as? <laughs> That's right, RJ. They're, they're 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 just high on life. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Isn't that is that is that what they're going for? Is that was that Bundwell's intent? Um. <laughs> We can talk about intent later, but what do you think mm. Bunwell's intent with this film was? I, yeah, we're, we're almost there. We're almost at the end of this. So anyway, okay. um, 
the bums get sent packing. Um, there's a, again vague ideas that like someone's going to get get sta- get stabbed. Um, yeah, Veridiana almost is sexually assaulted again. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so they're kind of like held. Up. Uh, was it Jorge? I think he manages to like because he's tied up or something. Uh, well, I I didn't know if he was tied up or if it was just that he got like hit on the head yeah. and he was like coming to consciousness again and he like just couldn't stand. He didn't have that like adrenaline venom bane shot that right. Robert Pattinson had, so it was like he he just couldn't like he's like Ugh. like yeah I didn't I didn't think he was tied up to me it just seemed like he was knocked out and like couldn't stand kind of thing yeah but anyways the police arrive yes they do they they send these dudes back in Mm -hmm. um and then the movie ends on this note that like oh now viridiana jorge and um ramona the uh housekeeper they're just uh gonna they're gonna hang out Oh, no, sorry. Yeah. Is that right? Well, she... So the way it ends is... So they they get those guys, and then they leave. And then you see, like, each of the characters kind of, like, alone. Not, like, alone, but, like, you show them separately for a second. And you're like, oh, man, they've all gone through stuff. Uh, (laughs) And then uh, the maid is in uh dude's room yes and then veridina yes. knocks on the door and gets let in and then she's surprised and to see the maid and they're playing cards yeah and she's surprised to see the maid because the maid was like with those vagrant dudes um and then uh the dude is like no sit down he's like we're just playing cards she doesn't mind and then he he's like you ever play cards she's like no not really and then uh he's like you know the first time i saw you i knew We'd be shuffling the deck. I thought my cousin and I will end up shuffling the deck together. Va va voom. What do you think the metaphor is there? Oh, fucking. <clears throat> what? What? So, RJ, you know this was yeah. the this was the the tricky ending to get around the the censors of Spain. What was uh, the real ending? Well, so the original was, and I'll read this here uh, from our friends of Wiki, Mr. Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. Um, Wikipedia, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Spanish Board of Censors rejected the original ending of the film, which depicted Viridiana entering her cousin's room, that's Jorge, and slowly closing the door behind her. Consequently, a new ending was written. This turned out to be more suggestive than the first because it implied a menage a trois. Among Ramona, Jorge, and Veridiana. You know about, I mean, you know about Menage a Trois? You've seen that episode of Seinfeld? I uh, I know that in the language, it means when two become three by way of one. And what that means is if you get the combo, you get fries, sandwich, and drink for the price of one. But, you know, it's it doesn't always work out the same way. But, but do you get the Happy Meal toy? It depends. Do you, do you get like a grimace? <laughs> it, it, oh, you could get a grimace. You could get a grimace. Nobody commented on our grimace talk two weeks ago. I thought that was pretty premium conversation, to be mm-hmm. honest with you. I know. We didn't even charge for it. That could have been paywalled. That could have been paywalled. And you know what? We should have done it. Because people just don't appreciate the grimace stuff. And that's too bad. Well, And that's too bad, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, what were we talking about? Well, I mean, do you know that the the uh, L'Observatore Romano, the official newspaper of the Vatican, described the film oh. as blasphemous? Um, why? Uh, I I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a Spanish Catholic. That's for sure. I'm not a Catholic either, or a Spaniard. So I don't I don't really know. Uh, I mean, is it just because it's a lady who wants to be a nun and then she gets abused? I guess. Yeah. I mean that's a bad thing. And then she wants to, and then she winds up wanting to be in this, uh, this relationship with this um, with her cousin. I know it's the Kinda implication, but the is implication. it really the implication? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And there's like a shot of, from like the Last Supper. I guess that that's that could upset somebody. I suppose if you're real. I mean, I like I, with I, the I, hobos. I, I I see people get upset about some silly things on the internet, and uh, maybe. This was the equivalent of that back in 1961. Huh. I mean, 
I get like I know I know I know the scene you're talking about like when they're at the table and stuff. Yeah, it's kind of like that, but it's not well, it's, like it's hundred. It one hundred percent is exactly like that. It's maybe exa- I don't know. Maybe I didn't see it when it was lined up in the way. Oh yeah, there's one very very clear shot. Um, oh. Yeah, is it a blink and you miss it kind of thing? No, <laughs> it's there. Mm. Fuck RJ. I mi- Well, I mean, I was watching. I watched that part. I just don't remember that explicitly. <laughs> Have you, Do you know what I mean? I'm going to have to send this to you. Is it the shot? Is, is this like uh, 4K ran all over again? No, come on. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yes. But like, I feel like the, I feel like it goes by fast because I was watching this no. whole scene and I don't remember this explicitly. It, it holds. It holds. <sighs> I mean, whatever. The Last Supper wasn't even like... That wasn't even like documented as like the like the painting itself was like maybe not accurate to like what really happened. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Oh, well, it's like have you ever seen the Da Vinci Code, Jarrett? Well, do you know that Benoit said uh, regarding it being blasphemous when it debuted in 1977 after uh, Francisco Franco the uh, uh, the whatever the the, the autocorrect i guess mm-hmm. the, of uh spain uh after world war Two, um he died and so they could release the film and mm-hmm. uh it was acclaimed at con winning the palm door bonwell said i didn't deliberately set out to be blasphemous but then pope john the 23rd is a better judge of such things than i am um pope john paul mm-hmm I mean, he he was one of the real ones, you know what I mean? Yeah, he was definitely a big John. He was a big Pope boy. Was he this? this no, this isn't John Paul. This is John. John Paul? This is Pope John. Oh, just Pope John? Pope John. Like, I don't know no Pope Johns. Um. Well, he was, his successor was Paul IV. This is, this is John 23, followed by Paul VI. And then he's followed by John Paul one. What about John Paul two? And then John Paul two. Okay, I know John Paul two. Yeah, every, everyone knows all that guy. I know John Paul two, and I know Benedict. He's pretty hip. He's pretty hip, but I don't know no John. I don't know no Pope John. Um, I mean, the church gets upset about a lot of things. <laughs> they sure do. So I mean, you take take it as it is. Take it with a grain of salt. You know what I mean? <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> Which guy? Oh, this is uh, the, this is the 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 Pope t- Pope twenty three John John twenty three. Here he is. John twenty three. <laughs> Ooh, he looks like he like a little macaroni and gravy. You know what I mean? <laughs> he he's uh he's getting into the gabagool. He'd be could be a good uh the penguin. The. Uh, Oh, he would be a good the penguin. If it was just you say that macaroni, gravy. Oh <clears throat> Buff Uncle. Buff Uncle. So anyway, hey RJ, yeah. uh I'm not a fan of this movie. Uh Oh good. Good. Yeah, it is like it's obviously like it's a very nicely photographed film, but sure. it's not a particularly dazzling looking movie either, I would sure. say. Uh, it seems like all the pieces are here for a movie, but there is nothing about the story that is interesting. Like I don't know, there's no there's no story. The character, like I find Viridiana, like, s- like extremely un like likable, or not even unlikable, just unnoteworthy. Uh, I, and like yeah. she doesn't do much, and there's no. I don't know. I just yeah, I just don't think this is actually uh, all that good. Uh, it's definitely the weakest of the Bunuel movies that we've watched up to this point. Okay. Uh, I mean, compared to like, you know, Discreet Charm of the Bourgeoisie, That Obscure Object of Desire, uh, Phantom of Liberty. I think, uh, yeah, maybe this is like Diary of a Chambermaid level. Cause that, mm-hmm. I think I was pretty, no, I really, apparently I gave that movie four stars. So Jeez. I guess I did like that one. But in my mind, I look at it and go, oh, when did we watch this? Mm-hmm. But Bel de, Bel de Jour, like three I, years ago. Bel de Jour, I have not seen forever, and I really, really like that movie. Exterminating Angel, I want to like that movie more, 
than I do because that's another mm-hmm. one of these beloved masterpieces of the master Bunwellians Bunwell, the Bunwellians. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this movie, I don't even know where to begin kind of lodging my disappointment with this because there's like well, a lot just that, start go from the start i mean i feel like i've been as i've been going through it i've been kind of just running sure. through the bits and pieces of it but like i don't know nothing happens and i mean some people might be like that's the brilliance of it well that's i mean that's the seinfeld approach but i mean they say nothing happens in seinfeld but something happens every week in seinfeld every week you and know what i mean th- am i entertained <laughs> Like gladiator style, or yeah, exactly, or or a different style, the exact same. Oh, okay. Well, I thought you'd be a fan of the um, <clears throat> the control that is uh, at play here. The control. Yeah. Uh, g- explain. No. Oh. I choose not to. <laughs> uh, okay, so you you love this movie, is what you're telling me. Yes. Okay. And and I hope. When I ask you now, RJ, what did you think of Verdiana? You will feel the same way that I do in my love. What if I told you that this was an absolute banger? I said you're lying sack of shit. I mean, yeah. I, I, w- I mean, I don't think people would have expected me to like this movie. I don't hate this movie or anything like that. But when I was watching it, I was like, eh. <laughs> so, like, so... I watched, uh, Andrea watched 20 minutes of this with me on Sunday and okay. then she went to bed Yeah, and I finished it and, uh, she saw like the build up to a lot of this stuff. Um, but she, she kind of, she left right before the uncle like drugs and rapes or like pretend rapes her. So she left, uh, she saw the uncle trying on like her clothes and stuff, but, uh, that was kind of the last part she saw. And it should be pointed out that like, uh, these scenes aren't played in this, like, overtly creepy way or anything like that. It's kind of just presented as matter of fact where it's like, yeah. Oh yeah, this is, Hey, you're just watching this guy do this. And I think he would be better at doing these sort of this, this um, perspective, this like with later movies where mm-hmm. it's like a little bit more jaunty or it, it has something to say about this rather than here. It, it feels very, um, it's just kind of like, Hey, this is a this is an idea I have in my head, but I don't exactly. This I mean, this is me just thinking about why I don't think this movie works for myself. Um, it's like I have this idea, but I don't know what that idea is, and it's like a it's like, it, and it feels very dis. There's a disconnect I feel in some of the visuals and like this actual narrative from like mm-hmm. having a point. Mm-hmm. And like I've like I mean I think I when we were talking about Phantom of Liberty, I think you were kind of. Uh, iffy on that one and then i think as i talked about it you were kind of like a little one over in my a little bit a little bit but like this i just kind of like man i i I don't connect to this and i I just feel like he he gets better so i'll tell you i'll tell you the one thing that stands out for me most Mm -hmm. but before i do that i'll just finish the andy thing um i do know what you mean like phantom of liberty when i watched it i was kind of like yeah, whatever. And then you're like, well, this is one thing I liked, and this is another thing I liked. And I was like, oh, okay, I can, I see what you mean. Um, Bunwell's like so so for me in general. Uh, but uh, so Andrea watched up into when the guy was cross dressing or like trying on the clothes. And uh, then she went to bed, and the next day I was like, do you want to know what happened in the movie? And she was like, yeah, what happened? And I was like, I was like, well, her uncle like pretend raped her. And she was like, oh, yeah. And I was like, and then he killed himself. And she was like, okay. And then I was like, and then she brought in a bunch of like vagrants and mm-hmm. then they tried to rape her too. And she was like, she's like, so it basically every criterion movie. And I was like, yeah, it seems like it. Cause every criterion movie she watches with me is usually about like, or she was like, is every criterion movie, uh, movie just about how it sucks to be a lady. And I was like, kind of, Oh yeah. you know what I mean? Like there's a lot of ladies just getting raped in these movies. Um, and sometimes they're the bad guy in the, in the Criterion movie. Um, so that that was her take. But uh, you know, one thing I one thing I didn't quite. I was kind of like, I don't know, man. Uh, and for this movie, and it kind of reminded me of um, Budo uh, Budo Saved from Drowning. Oh yeah. Uh, you know what these movies kind of do? You know how like half of the Criterion movies are glamorizing uh, 
like being rich. This is vil- just, vilifying being poor. This is vilifying being poor, where it's just kind of like, it's like, look, look what happens. You give these guys an inch, they're going to take a mile. Not only are these homeless, vagrant people going to take, take, take from you, but you give them an an opportunity. Well, isn't this, and they are going to rape your household? Like, isn't that part of maybe that's part of the blasphemy? Yes. It's like, oh yeah, you think you're supposed to always help the poor? What? What if they're really they deserve to be poor? What if they deserve to be and, poor? Because I, I don't think that's what Benwell is actually saying. I but, don't think it is but, either. But, but I think he's, show, I he's showing it in the movie is like, aha, that thing that yeah. you assume that you're not supposed to say. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I, I understand that too. It's like, I know that all these things are very like pushing your glasses back onto your head kind of thing. Like, well, it's like, it's this, but it's also the double deke and then the zigzag and then the real gotcha. And it's like, yes, yes, yes. I understand. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm going back through the movies that we've watched, trying to be like, what are the movies where like, there isn't like this presence of, badness happened to women and it's like young mr lincoln <laughs> it's like oh well, even that poor mother lincoln gets threatened to get put in jail because she won't give up her uh her kids they're like hey listen lady if oh, you won't tell us which one of your sons did that's it, not, we're gonna get them both that, well that's not that's not yeah well it's not rape and abuse i, I yeah, suppose right yeah. but yeah other than young lincoln mm-hmm. what's another one uh oh. I mean, gee, I was gonna say Tales of Hoffman, but ooh. Ooh. there's that ro- there's that robot chick. Yeah, probably the one that's most friendly to women Definitely is Vagabond. <laughs> oh come on! Uh, Definitely not what? Uh, no, uh, Batgirl. Oh, no, uh, two, 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 four, well, yeah, specifically. How about Naked RJ? Well, Naked's about an incel, but he doesn't have he doesn't have the most hateful. Uh, well, I mean, like then, opinions then there's, towards then there's women. The samurai, the original insult. The original insult. That dude's full blown. How about, ever tell you? What about bad timing, RJ? Things work out great. Well, well for Harvey Keitel, it's okay. He's mm-hmm. okay in that movie. Yeah, he, he makes it okay. <laughs> he makes it okay. Yeah, the Criterion is a it's a dank place. Mm. Well, 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 that's what I mean. Every time, like. Andrew watches some of these movies with me or she'll watch like 20 minutes and then and then just be like, ah, I don't care anymore. But like every time I try to explain one of these movies to her, it's always it's always this stuff. <laughs> and she's like, is that all that the, those movies are? And I was like, yeah, a good handful of them. I'd say like 50 percent. Um, and that's probably a pretty high percentage. I, I, and I, I don't think next week's going to change that. <laughs> oh, good. I think the week the week after that should be okay though. This is the week after RoboCop two. Uh, close. Okay. Well, anyways, yeah, violence towards women. But uh, yeah, I I know that I think he was trying to do the uh, the switch the like the gotcha the switcheroo on it was like ah uh, maybe you shouldn't help the poor. But at the same time, to me, I was just like. I feel like a lot of people will just watch this and then and interpret it as like, man, can't trust poor people. They'll get you every time. And it's the same. And that's the other side of the criteria where it's just like, man, it's really hard to be part to be part of the upper class. You guys don't even know. You don't even yeah. know the burden of responsibility we have. And it's just like, hmm. I'm looking through my uh, through through my uh, people I follow. And their yeah. their reviews. It's a lot of a lot of four and a half stars, five stars. This movie's got a lot of love. RJ, we're, we're, we're the odd ones out. Maybe we're the monsters. I, I mean, it's probably not surprising about me. People might have thought you would have found something out of it. No, because you you sometimes do. I'm, I'm a sicko. Well, you're I, you're, this, you're the dunk. Movie, I don't even think this movie's sick. I just think it's kind of there. Yes, I understand. And that's what it was like with me, too. It's like I said, I don't like I don't dislike this movie a lot. I was like, oh, I hate it. I was just kind of like I was like, well, girlfriend, girlfriend gets put through some bad stuff. Like I like that that guy hung himself. <laughs> that's that's OK. 
I, I liked that part of the movie where it's just like he won't she won't do it and then it, they're like ah oh, he hung himself and I was like yeah it's like I'm I'm okay with that and then the vagrants when she's feeding him soup I was like oh that's cool feeding the poor people soup but um you get introduced to like Enzo or whatever his name is Bellagio's R- Ribagio's whatever they whatever the cousin's name is and uh like automatically even like it's addressed on screen where the lady's like you just you're just like not cool with her because she's not like paying attention to you and you like like her and he's like no i'm not i don't do that and then like in the next scene he's like in her room he's just like hey guys or she, he's like hey viridina like you want to hang out and you know that's pretty much how those things go but the girlfriend just wants to like take out her little like crown of thorns and her crucifix and pray she just wants to be left alone to pray, Jarrett. She got her yeah, her thorns and her nails, oh, her, her nails, her paraphernalia. Uh, in the one of the earlier scenes, they were doing that, and Andrea's like, she's like, is this just, she's like, is this someone who like thinks that this is just something Catholics do? I was like, I'm pretty sure Bunwell is Catholic, and I was like, and I was like, Andrea went to Catholic school too. I was like, I don't know if you remember, babe. And I was like, but Catholics are. Because she, she was like, this seems a little bit exaggerated. And I was like, Catholics are a little bit exaggerated. We do some fancy stuff, girl. Mm-hmm. I was like, you you might not realize, but it's there. You might not remember, but it's there. It's pretty fancy. I don't know. Viridinia. It's, uh... <laughs> Viridinia. Viridinia. I, uh... The thing that stuck out with me most was that last scene. Because I was really watching, like... Not cell phone watching, but I was just watching. I was like, you know, I really thought we'd end up shuffling the deck. <laughs> Finn. and i was like like my eyes squinted a little bit i was like what the fuck i was like what is that supposed to mean like i knew what it was supposed to mean but i was like who thought that was a good idea <laughs> i don't know this is just another in a long line of criterion movies that i'm just like eh. <laughs> when's when's batman showing up when yeah when's batman gonna come brutalize these homeless people <laughs> Well, only when they were like henchmen for Scarecrow or something. Which, that dude with the knife, he would definitely become a henchman. That's right. He'd definitely be on in a fringe group online somewhere. And then, you know what I mean? And then the Batman can just get shot in the chest multiple times and just walk it off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just not in the face. No. No. Somewhere else, probably. You want to hear from, from people who... Uh... Hate this movie? I, I guess. Okay. Olivia Sapone. Okay. Half a star. The worst. I mean, all right. <laughs> this person. Oh, they. Oh, weird. They only have five star movies and half star movies. Oh, okay. Uh, a favorite film of theirs is Castaway on the Moon. From 2009. I don't. I don't even know what that is, but they half starred Mulholland Drive, mm. and they said you ruined my childhood. F you, David. See, I didn't say the cuss word there, Jerry, because you know, no cussing. No mm. cussing. That's right. I don't know. They like a lot of anime and Roma. <laughs> they always like Roma. You know, they always like it. How about underscore Greta underscore half a star? You think this is Greta Gerwig? I had to watch this for an exam, but I sincerely hope I'll never, ever have to watch another one of Bunwell's movies ever again in my entire existence. Seems like a bit much. Here's their bio. I didn't pre-read this either, so you're getting this live. Sometimes I watch a movie and don't really understand it because what is depicted within the movie is far from my experience. But then I go on living and things happen to me. Things I had already seen in a movie. And so I come to understand what that movie was trying to tell me. And that movie come to understand me. That's one of the best things about cinema. <laughs> oh. So uh, I did not pre-read that. I swear. I swear. Uh, favorite films include uh, nothing that is more than five years old. Uh, worst person in the world, pain and glory, sharp objects, which is a TV show, and I may destroy you, which I believe is also a TV show. Mm. So, 
Just TV shows. Okay. They have starred Who Be Have a Ween, though. So. Yeah. I don't, I don't, don't be upset by that. I'm not upset. I'm just, I'm just making note of it. I just want to point it out. That's all. Uh, how about Jelly Ginger? Half a star. Mm-hmm. This movie makes me think of that scene from Under the Silver Lake where Andrew Garfield's character says, I know you're not supposed to say this, but I fucking hate homeless people. <laughs> that kind of seemed like the whole thesis of Vera Diana. I get, mm-hmm. that, get, that gets you, RJ? Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Well, I, I, didn't say, I didn't read any of these, but that was that was my take. I was like, does Bunwell hate homeless people? What's going on here? Apart from that, all plot points seem to hinge on the continuous threat of sexual violence toward the female characters in a really disturbingly eroticized way. It's fucking disgusting. Fight me. I um I don't disagree with this guy, but I absolutely hate when people say fight me. Yeah. It's like fight me. And it's just like, you understand that your hey. <laughs> aggression is the same thing that you're trying to mock, friend. You, you, want, you know you know about narratives? That uh, he is he in control of his narrative? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I hate when people do the fight me thing stupid uh this guy likes mysterious skin the love witch how sue and life of pie which is weird life of pie seems out of place but oh well they're not rating movies anymore so they're taking the uh the cool approach uh how about one star from turkey it's just too (laughs) deep for me i uh like this turkey that we're talking about. Oh, get fucked. Okay, so they say that this movie is too deep for them. These are this. This is Turkey's favorite films. Mirror by Tarkovsky. Pierre Le Fou, Last Year of Marion Bad. And Santan Tango. So they like Santan Tango. Yeah. Apparently this movie is too much. Too much. It's too, and I can't... It's too spicy. It's too scary. I can't read their reviews because they're in some sort of Sanskrit, that a, a language I don't speak. Okay. So maybe they're actually from Turkey? What language do they speak in Turkey? Turkish. Like a big Turk? Come on. <laughs> well, we're, we're Turkish delights from Turkey, right? Probably. Yeah. But I don't know if it's uh, quite the same. As what we have? Yeah. Our, I mean, doubtful. The, the Turkish delight? Yeah, I mean, doubtful. I like Turkish delight. I like big Turks. Okay. Yeah. Uh oh, here's another one too. Kimberly Perlman, one okay. star. The worst second half of anything ever. And we're supposed to be impressed that this offended the Catholic Church. That's really easy to do. Dismiss that I it's cri- dismiss that it's criterion, sixties and foreign, and try to convince me you're not pretending you'd like this. Still waiting, tick tock emoticon rolly eyes. The one star is because she's pretty. I mean, you shouldn't give stars based on appearance, man. That's just vain. Um, but uh, do you do you think this person's photo is uh, are is, really is, them? Is, is is the author? Well, based on that, here are the favorite films: Jarrett, Come and See, Paris, Texas, Mulholland Drive, and Belle de Jure. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. They only have a couple half star films, and they're Woody Allen films, and uh, the Neon Demon. So this, so uh, this person's Instagram is Eastern European Princess. They're a film chick out of Los Angeles, and, uh, and she she has a lot of bikini photos. Yeah, but you do also. Well, right? yeah, I mean, but I don't post them. Wow. That's for friends and family. That's only on the Patreon. <laughs> no, Jared. friends and family. Oh, say it's on the Patreon, and then oh. people people will sign up and then edit That's this out. It's on the OnlyFans. Say, say it's on. Yeah, it's on the OnlyFans. Sign up. Um, so you can get exclusive access to Jarrett's um, <clears throat> butt. <laughs> Crack. McCracken. <laughs> butt crack. Butt crack. Cracking. Uh, what were we talking about? Uh, Louis Bunuel movies. Oh, Bunuel. Yeah, I don't know. More like Bun, not well. Mm. <laughs> I got him. None well. 
Ooh. Unwell? That's what it was. More like Louis Unwell. Fuck. We really fucked that up. <laughs> Botched it. Like this God review. Well, whatever. Lord, People don't it. come to us for movie reviews. They shouldn't. I wouldn't. No. I don't trust myself or you. I mean, my advice to you is to do what your parents did. Get a job, sir. Yeah, is that the Ralph Klein approach? <laughs> the bumps will always lose. Get a job, you bums. Yeah, you, don't remember, you don't remember that from Big Lebowski, RJ? I remember that. I just thought you were doing the Ralph Klein approach. Uh, you know what I mean? It, it is in the same spirit. It is in the same spirit. Whereas, like, how do we cure homelessness? And he said, give them jobs. Tell them to get to work. <laughs> Any final thoughts on Verdiana? Yeah, the last time you'll ever think about this movie. Um, are you gonna get a job? Nah, I'm gonna. I'm. I've got a career in podcasting ahead of me in bikini pics. Whoa. Uh, yeah, I'm fine with that. Mankini. A what? Mankini. A what? <laughs> Mankini. Someone can make that a ringtone. Mankini. After the break. Mm. Um. Oh man, I don't know. RJ and I shuffle the deck of magic cards. Oh. It's St. Patrick's Day. Got to play mono Did green deal, decks. Deal, deal them in. Deal them. I see. I set your life total to forty. We're playing commander. You lost a lot of people, dude. <laughs> 